I'm very pleased any time I start a new game series and the first game I play makes a good impression, and Shin Megami Tensei 5 certainly made a good impression for the mainline Shin Megami Tensei series. The combat stays on the right side of the challenging but not overly frustrating balance, the writing especially for the demons is full of character and humor, the designs of the demons and the world are amazing, the atmosphere excellent, and the exploration and side content a fantastic flavoring to the game. If you are like me and have never tried a mainline Shin Megami Tensei game before, SMT5 is a great place to start and I think has a lot to offer current fans of the series as well. Shin Megami Tensei V is a turn-based combat JRPG with demon summoning mechanics developed by Atlas and published by Sega in North America and Nintendo in other non-Japan regions. The game is currently an exclusive for the Nintendo Switch and was announced for the console all the way back in 2017 upon the release of the console itself. Due to various reasons such as Atlas using Unreal Engine 4 for the first time, the coronavirus pandemic, and making sure assets were high quality to match the Switch's capabilities, the game took a long time to finally come out. Shin Megami Tensei V finally reached players in November of 2021 and is the first ever simultaneous worldwide launch for the series. The game came out to significant critical praise and sales-wise topped Japan's physical sales chart during its release week and had the most successful launch physically in the US in terms of dollars for any SMT mainline title. It's clear that the game was well received and did quite well when it came to sales too, which is an encouraging sign for the series. What then is the story of this game? You play as a seemingly normal high schooler who, when exploring rumors of demons in a tunnel near the school, is pulled into an alternate Tokyo called Da'at. Da'at has seen better days though and is now the wasteland from a battle between demons and angels. Before becoming a victim of the demon's attack though, you are saved by a being named Algami who fuses with you to become a Naho Bino, a powerful but blasphemous being. It is also revealed that God slash the creator is dead. Thus, certain protections around modern Tokyo are eroding and the other gods begin to plot how they can take over the mantle of the creator. After escaping back to the Tokyo you left, you team up with the organization Bethel Japan, one part of a larger Bethel organization founded to keep the demons at bay. The efforts though have grown more difficult and demons are now invading into Tokyo. You must beat back the demons and use your Nahobino powers to ascend to godhood in order to decide what becomes of the world for both humanity and divinity. The story and writing is at its best when it focuses on the divine parts of the conflict, the jockeying between the gods and sometimes even how they interact with humans. Unfortunately, most of this good writing is found in the side quests as opposed to the main story. There's some evidence of it, especially in the last section of the game, but just understand going in that Shin Megami Tensei V has some good ideas, but tends not to show them off to their true potential in the main story. This does mean that you have great incentive to seek out the side quests though, which is good because they're a lot of fun and they tend to focus on the demons who have stronger writing and motivation than most of the humans. I still found a lot of enjoyment in the stories the game told, but there is quite a bit of wasted potential and also some laughably ridiculous scenes. Shin Megami Tensei V also retains the multiple routes of most SMT games with Chaos, Order, and Neutral being the three main routes along with one hidden one. Unlike previous games though, your decisions don't determine what route you'll end up with since you get to choose any of them at the end. It is easier if you choose the one you've been trending towards over the course of the playthrough, but it is not strictly necessary. This is a nice inclusion for those who want to see all the endings easily without playing through a lot, but it also means most of the decisions you make over the course of the game feel rather hollow. This is my first SMT game, so I can't really compare to prior games, but the morality system seemed basic in this game, to its detriment in their efforts to make the decisions consequential. That though pretty much covers all my negatives towards the game, because thankfully the gameplay is where the major focus is, and it shines. During the game, you'll be thrown into several different areas of Da'at that you get to explore around, encountering enemies, picking up items, and completing side quests. This is not a truly open world game, but these areas are large enough that you have a lot you can do in every one of them. You can even revisit places, which may be necessary for some of the bigger side quests. I absolutely loved running around the ruins of Tokyo in this game. There was so much to find, and the incentives for looking for all the stuff was strong. The side quests, as I mentioned before, were well written and offered good rewards. Finding all 200 of the Mimon, which I of course did thanks to the demon you can pay to point out all of their locations, is not just immensely satisfying but gives tangible rewards that can be used to improve your skills in numerous areas. Assisting this are the numerous leyline fonts you can travel between and the return pillar you're given early on that can transport you instantly to the last leyline you visited. 
While the big areas might be intimidating, the developers have cleverly included orbs or crystals that help you recover your HP, MP, and Magatsui. Not only are these extremely helpful to recover after a long trek through several battles, these orbs tend to be strategically placed to lead you to certain things. They can be guiding you towards where the main quest is, but also I followed them leading to side quests, to treasures that grant items or demon essence, and much more. Another thing on the map guiding your path around are the abscesses that obscure the map while in effect and spark a battle when you attack them. Clearing them clears your view on the map, revealing even more to do, and gives rewards in the form of unlocking miracles, more on them later. This gives good motivation to seek these out and destroy them. Paying attention to your surroundings is crucial because of the size of the world, but also because of all the hints the developers have built into the landscape for you to find. I felt joy when exploring in spite of spending all this time in a post-apocalyptic wasteland because of the purposeful design of it all. I really hope the series keeps this strong exploration aspect in future entries. As you're wandering around as well though, you need to be on the lookout for enemies. For the first time in the series, you can see exactly which demon is approaching in the field view, a far cry from the random battles certainly, and an improvement over seeing unspecific demons traveling around the landscape. The world feels more alive because of the cries and sights of the demons wandering around, and you can also pick your battles more carefully than before depending on if you want more experience from a battle or to recruit a specific demon. I really couldn't imagine playing the game without seeing the specific demons moving around me. It feels similar to Xenoblade at times, including with big intimidating foes that you probably shouldn't take on, but once you can defeat them are immensely satisfying to go back and crush. As with most JRPGs with enemies in the field of view, you can initiate combat by hitting the enemies and gain an advantage, and they can do the same to you. The battle starts out as a standard turn-based battle system. You and your up to three demon allies go, and then the enemies go. The main wrinkle that Shin Megami Tensei includes is the press turn system. You start out with as many actions as you have allies, but for each critical or weakness you hit, you gain back a turn. The weaknesses generally go off of the elements of fire, electric, ice, force, light, and dark. If you play your cards right, then you can have every one of your allies go twice before the enemies get a single action. You are limited to only twice though, you can't keep doing it indefinitely. You also can lose actions with a miss or if enemies block one of your attacks, which is frustrating when they do it, but very fun when you pull it off against them. I love this system because of the planning I got to do around it. By hitting weaknesses and thinking carefully about my moves, I could have turns where I could accomplish multiple goals in one turn, doing damage and healing, boosting my allies and guarding. My approach needed to be versatile. Swapping demons in and out also adjusted the format, and making sure that the enemies couldn't get their own press turn advantages was essential to tackling each enemy encounter. The toughest battles involved a lot more thinking than I've had to do in other turn-based battle systems in the past. I was glad for the challenge, most of the time. Other times I may have been frustrated at certain outcomes, but I knew to expect that going into the game, and that does make a big difference. My expectations for a challenging but fun battle system were absolutely met. Atlas just knows how to make engaging turn-based battle systems. Some new elements or changes to the system that SMT5 has, as opposed to the rest of the SMT series, include the new Magatsui gauge at the top of the screen. When filled, you can then unleash one of a number of Magatsui skills that can turn a battle just like that, or give the final push to finish off a tough foe. Be warned though, your enemies have these abilities as well, and are not afraid to use them when the time comes. Otherwise, the big changes to the SMT combat system are twofold. One with light and dark abilities. They only have a chance to one-hit kill enemies or allies who have a weakness to light or dark, instead of just anyone like before. That certainly helps avoid some of the possible really frustrating deaths, because as you might know, if your protagonist goes down, that's a game over. The second change that I've seen mixed feelings about is the stat buff slash debuff mechanic changes. They no longer automatically target your whole party or whole enemy group, and they can now wear off over time. These are the changes that I've heard of to the formula, and at least the Mangotsui edition and light and dark changes are welcome to me, but I thought I would let all you returning fans know about these in advance of getting the game. As for the demons themselves, both as allies and enemies, there is a lot of variety to them. Since they were my allies or potential allies, I spent a lot of time paying attention to their strengths and weaknesses in order to build out my team. I loved specializing my team to particular roles, especially given the player character's suitability to multiple roles. The ability to talk to the demons revealed lots of fascinating interactions as you try and persuade them to join with me, and together we could rule the galaxy. 
These sparked more laugh-out-loud moments than anything else the game did, and although it felt random at times, it wasn't too punishing. Most of them have some requirements before they join, but I found those usually easy to fulfill so long as I was well-stocked with money. Recruiting is essential for effective fusing, and fusing plays a very important role in the game. Most of the demons you recruit won't stay with you long in my experience, since they can be used to get someone more powerful. The feeling of fusing a new ally and using them to curb stomp previously tough opponents is very gratifying. On top of that, the designs of the demons were fantastic, both the older demons being brought back and the newer ones. The game even gives you an opportunity to learn about mythology, and I was fascinated learning things about gods or demons I didn't know previously, or learning more about the ones I already did during the loading screens and other supplemental text. The demons really make up for the lack of memorable human characters, and I remember far more about Amano, Zako, Fion, and Idun than I do almost any of the human characters. When it comes to gameplay though, one of SMT5's strengths is its sense of progression. You get that mainly in the world of shadows, starting with fusing. Fusing multiple demons together grants a new, likely more powerful ally. This incentivizes talking to and recruiting demons and gathering money to use your compendium to create stronger or better suited allies to your current situation. However, sometimes you or your allies may need a little additional help with regards to abilities or affinities. In that case, you can use the demon essences you collect along your journey to either change your player character's affinities towards certain elements, or use the essences for any party member to give them new abilities. This mechanic gives you even greater control on how you build your team, and that's always a good thing. The last part of the World of Shadows that is important to pay attention to are the miracles. Miracles are passive abilities that you can buy with the glory resource, which you can get by finding glory crystals and finding Mimon. This is why I suggested finding all the Mimon. These passive abilities unlock over time to buy as you defeat various abscesses and offer boons to do many things, such as upgrade the Nahobino's abilities, improve your negotiating skills, open up more space for demons to recruit, etc. Highly useful in your efforts throughout the game, and an excellent reward for all the searching you had to do to get all those Mimon. Presentation for the game is top tier. The atmosphere for SMT5 is perfect, from the art style evoking the sense of ruin exploration while also reminding us that these ruins used to be humanity. Sure, the graphics aren't stunning, but I think the sights of the game were still quite memorable and as I said, fit the mood the game wanted to portray extremely well, especially via lighting and color. The character designs were alright, but as I said before, it's the demon designs that were given the most time and attention, and it shows. The demons look absolutely fantastic. Now the game did struggle at times with the frame rate, although this was honestly more noticeable when the game was docked rather than in handheld mode. This never negatively affected my experience, but it came up now and again so I felt I should mention it here. The music of the game, similar to the art, served to enhance the atmosphere of the game. The battle tracks for me were the best ones, and had greater variety than I expected. It's not a soundtrack I'm going to come back to time after time, but I really think the soundtrack was tuned really well to the game itself. The sound design accomplished that same goal, and I never want to hear those Anzu shrieks again. Too atmospheric. Finally, the voice acting was alright, the humans were okay, and the demons were generally better. Seeing a pattern here? Shin Megami Tensei V is a game I would recommend to JRPG fans who are looking for a strong gameplay loop. A game that is going to challenge them in ways, but also give you a lot of tools to try and take down those challenges. Some people might be disappointed by the story and the lack of focus on the characters, and I do wish they had been fleshed out more. It's not a game-breaking experience for me though, and there's still plenty of fun writing from the demons and even some notably great sections of side quests. Shin Megami Tensei V has a lot to offer, and I'm sincerely glad I got the chance to play it as my first proper SMT game. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like to help the channel surface among the many videos competing for the attention of the YouTube algorithm. Comment below any thoughts you have on SMT5 or anything else that comes to mind. Subscribe to keep up with the channel moving forward, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Have a great day, and happy gaming!